Guys, it's Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying. I'm doing these videos back from 2018. I'm doing reactions of them. And these are videos that I did when I was still working. I had, you know, about a month and a half left till I retired. So I was kind of doing a video every day to document um, things through that. And so there's a lot of them. Most of them are really short. I'm really enjoying watching these and I'm getting a kick out of some of the things that I, uh, that I say. You know, really, I should have uh, retired last year. I was gonna try to keep that a secret, but um, I didn't do too good in college, uh, believe it or not. And so it took me a little while longer to uh, graduate than some people, so I should have been able to already retire. Huh. I know how to start a video, don't I? True confessions. Um, I did. It took me five years to graduate. I transferred and messed around and didn't make good grades sometimes and stuff like that. It's kind of funny um, because that happens to a lot of people, you know, but um, I don't know if this was maybe a backhanded uh, jab at the school district where I worked. <laughs> kind of like the old joke, like, you want to hire me? I don't want to work here. I wouldn't work for anybody that hire a guy like me kind of a thing. I don't know. Um, but I did, you know, I had a lot of ambition at that point in my career. Not at this point. At this point, I was ready. To, I had a foot out the door. I was ready to go. But uh, I did, you know, go and get my uh, master's degree and my specialist degree and all that kind of stuff. And I tried to become a principal and that never did work out. And um, I have some very good advice for you or it's not really advice, it's just something you really ought to know. Um, and I can say this now, it's been years since it's not a dig at this district, it's just the way it is. Uh, it really matters who you know. It really, really does. If you know the right people, you can get jobs because there's ever, tons of people out there. You got all this competition. And, um, you know, there were jobs that I interviewed for, uh, like the school district. We had a lot of schools, it was a big school district. Um, the school district could put me through a training course, you know, to become a principal, me and like a, a number of candidates uh, when I was an assistant principal, trying to prepare us, you know, and, and like when the schools got ready to interview, they had this pool of candidates that they could pick from. And so I was one of those. And I remember one time they hired this guy um, and all of the other assistant principals were like, this guy's a goofball. I, I could not believe he would ever, ever get a principal's job, uh, but he did. And I remember having a very good interview. I was really confident I was gonna get that job and I didn't get it and I was shocked. Uh, now at this point in my career, nothing shocked me anymore. I, I would, I'd see people get jobs under just be shaking my head going, uh. <laughs> but anyway, that's the way it is, you know. If, if you're going into the job market, you need to know it matters who you know. You always hear people say that, but until that happens to you, um, you don't get it. But, you know, here I'm, I'm obviously confessing that I didn't feel, you know, I, I, I wasn't setting the world on fire as a college student. I'll put it that way. I wasn't like I was when I got about midway through my career and I started having a little ambition. Um, but people change, don't they? Um, but I remember when uh, when I got my first job, actually it's a miracle that I have this many days in education because I was taking the teacher certification test, um, which they don't, um, they don't give that anymore. They quit doing that years and years ago. But anyway, we had a test we had to take. It was called the teacher certification test. And um, I went in to take it. It was in Athens and the guy next to me looked at me and said, uh, do you have a job yet? And he happened to be a principal at a middle school um, in a rural area in the North Georgia mountains. All right, I found my teacher certification test scores the other day when I was looking through our safe, believe it or not. But anyway, um, I had, really, I had one interview. Back then, this was 1989, there weren't a ton of teaching jobs. 
and I didn't know anybody to get to get in with. I didn't, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm telling you, there were not a lot of jobs, even for teachers. You know, it's just kind of hard to believe now, but back then there weren't many jobs. So I, um, it was a miracle that that I found that guy. I, I mean, at that point, I had no interviews scheduled at all. <laughs> all and I just happened to sit right next to a guy who's taking a completely different test than me and he's a school principal and he's a first year school principal he's never hired anybody and I think he was pretty desperate to get somebody hired and so he sees me sitting there and he asked me what I'm taking and I told him he said oh I need a social studies teacher and I was like wow this is a complete and total miracle and it was it was it was in Lumpkin County where I had gone to North Georgia College before I transferred to the University of Georgia. So I knew all about that county. I lived in that town and um, yeah, it worked out. And asked me if I had a job and I just looked at him because I mean, man, I was wearing um, cut off camouflage pants, um, had a mullet and probably had the best Tom Selleck mustache you've ever seen going, it was just, just my ginormous mustache. Um, and I had, there's God knows what kind of t-shirt or whatever I had on and shoes. I'm sure I had on basketball shoes. And he looked at me and said, if you got a job, and I wanted to start laughing and go, if I got a job, no, I don't have a job. No, uh, yeah, I didn't know I was walking in there when I was taking my teacher, teacher certification test and it was gonna be like a job interview. <laughs> I didn't know what to wear or <laughs> what I wore to college every day. I'm not kidding you, man. I must have looked like some kind of bum uh, going in there because um, man, there were a lot of kids that dressed up kind of to go to class and stuff like that at the University of Georgia, but I was not one of those. I was where I wore what I wanted to wear. I didn't care what everybody else wore. And I and what I, how I described what I looked like then was probably exactly what I looked like. I can't believe that guy looked at me and goes, oh, here's a potential. Here's, <laughs> hey, this guy over here with the, with the mustache, I'm gonna hire that guy. <laughs> so anyway, the guy told me I needed to come down there and interview. And uh, that was the only interview I ever had. And I got the job and started teaching at the middle school. And um, to be honest with you, I never even went to middle school. <laughs> we didn't have middle school. All we had was, uh, Elementary went to like seventh grade, and then we went to high school. The entire seventh grade at that school, social studies, every class I had was maxed out, and I think the max number of kids back then in a the class was 33 to 34. So I had 33 to 34, five or six times a day, 13 year olds. My first teacher, <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, it was tough now, it, it was hard. And, uh, but luckily back then there wasn't as much accountability. They weren't watching every move you make and all that kind of stuff. So you kind of got to grow into it a little bit. Um, you had kind of had a little bit of a grace period there for a year or two to kind of find your way. It wasn't as much um, pressure as it is now. Uh, but in fairness now, they do get a lot better teaching preparation than we got back then. Um, I'm telling you, back then, you really, it, you really didn't know what you were getting into. And because uh, we didn't get into schools and do a whole lot of, uh, you know, pr practice teaching. Uh, I think we went into schools one once before we started our student teaching and then we went and did our student teaching and that was it. So by the time you were a senior and I remember people that were doing their student teaching and then we would all meet, my class uh, of, of student teachers, we would meet like once a month or whatever. And I, I remember people coming in there and after their first week or two at school and they were absolutely shocked at what the kids were like and what the, and now these are young people now you got to think now these are 20 year olds they haven't been out of school long 21 22 year olds and uh, yeah not 20 22 um 22 year olds so 
we'd only been out of school three or four years, but some of them, like they would put us in these rural schools uh, around Athens to do our student teaching. And a lot of these kids had gone to school in uh, suburban Atlanta. And they had gone to these really nice schools or these really big schools. And then you stick them out at some rural single A school in, in rural Georgia. Uh, it was a culture shock. I, I remember some of those people coming in going, these kids they don't even know where China is. They don't know anything about the world. And I'm like, yeah, well, no. where'd you go to school at? I mean, did, what'd you think these kids were gonna be like? You know, they don't know anything. Uh, because they usually, when you student teach, they usually stick you in ninth grade classes or eighth grade classes or something like that. Those kids don't know what you think. And, uh, and I, I guarantee you there were a lot of people that when they finally got to their student teaching, they realized, oh, I don't want to teach. Now, you, now I've wasted four years or, or five years in my case. Now I've wasted four years of college. And, but that's the way it was back then. They didn't stick you in schools to let you see if it was going to work out for you. You, you got all your education and then you went into that classroom. So uh, it's like, um, you know, it's like being in the rodeo and uh, getting on that bull and then them opening that gate. Um, it's too late to decide whether or not you want to do that at that point, you're, you're on the bull. And so <laughs> once they stuck you in that classroom, you're on the bull. So I hope you're a good bull rider because you're bull riding now. So, didn't even have middle school. So, my first middle school experience was my first middle school experience. Uh, I'll tell you guys about that one later. But anyway, have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> That's the truth, guys. That is the absolute truth. I had no, I had never been in the middle school at all. I, and so I go in to teach these seventh graders and it was like you know it was it was trial by fire i'll put it that way um you know and you're like well that seems really dramatic chris i mean it wasn't d-day I, I know that but you know for my experience as a teacher and as a 22 year old uh who who had never done anything and never had had a full-time job that you know that's the way it is when you get out of college just like you know kids when they get out of high school and they get a full-time job and they're going to be trained as a welder or something like that, you really have no idea what it's like making that transition from, you know, kid to adult, which is really kind of what it is. So whether it's going in the army, whether it's, you know, getting that first full-time job, whether it's going to, you know, getting out of college and getting that first full-time job, it, it's this kind of the same thing for everybody. You know, it's sink or swim. Now, is it easier today? I, I don't know. I mean, I know they have, um, they're a lot more understanding, it seems to be, of, of young people. Like my, my daughters, you know, are getting jobs right now. And some of the things they tell me, I'm just like, I can't believe they do that for them. You know, I'm like, I just got stuck in there and it was like, go. You know, <laughs> it's like throwing a kid. I guess they still, you know, taught kids to swim by taking them and throwing them in the pool and going, swim. <laughs> That's the way it felt anyway to me. I was swimming. Now, I, now my first, I mean, it was just a blur that first. I still remember, I still remember my first class. And I remember the kids that were in it. And I remember their names, not all of them, but, but the ones that, that kind of stood out. And uh, it was just a wild thing. And, and uh, you know, people have asked me, would you do it again? Would you teach again? You know, if you had to do it now, would you teach again? And my answer is always this. It's always for the retirement, yes. Absolutely, because you can't beat it. You get to retire at an early age. It's a good retirement with good benefits. Yes, I would do it. Uh, is it harder now? 100% yes. It, it's way harder to do. But uh, anyway, I'll talk about all this kind of stuff later on. But that's a, um, that, that was... You know, I don't. I didn't come on these things and lie. I'll tell you that. I'll tell you that much. But I still had a job, so there were certain things I couldn't say. And for it's been a long time now since I retired, but there's a lot of things that, that I can't talk about or that I won't talk about. 
uh, specific things that happen because they, you know, they involve people that may still be working or kids or whatever. Um, and, you know, so I didn't really want to talk that much about specific things about people because I mean, I saw some things happen that were wild and, and, it, and at different schools, I was around the state and it, a lot of places cause I coached. But um, anyway, thanks for watching guys. Uh, I'm enjoying going back and looking at these things and um, hope you guys are too. So we'll talk to you later. See ya.